transition. Welcome to Guys Talk Knives Live, brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com. My name is Andy. This is episode 104 of Guys Talk Knives Live. We are live in the Rico Suave Memorial Studio. <laughs> Anybody remember Rico Suave? Yes, yes. I am a 90s guy right there. Raised in the 80s, graduated in 1990. Yeah, Rico Suave. Leather jacket oiled up underneath. Remember that guy? I do remember that guy. Yes. Oh, no, no, Yes. Yes. Molina is over there taking your questions, handling everything. The cat is being good for right now. We shall see if that lasts. We've got a great show for you today. Again, we're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, the world's largest knife store, soon to be reopened. Yes, I will get to that in just a minute, but soon to be reopen. I'm going to wave hi to everybody who's coming in. Hello, hello. <laughs> I don't get to see your comments during the show, but uh, Melina does. So keep your questions rolling. She won't uh, pass any question. Well, she'll pass most questions. <laughs> Some questions she does not pass to me, but she will try to get to your questions, and she will try to pass the ones on that she thinks I can answer on air without making a fool of myself. To me, and I will try to answer those for you. We've got five great items. We're not doing the show the way we normally do uh, and have done in the past. We're doing it in the quarantine style, the on location style, the uh, in my living room fake background style that we have gotten into. But we've got five great items today, including something really fun to lead off with. I'm going to lead off, of course, with our business and um, tell you who won from last week's show. Last Thursday, we gave away. A really nice Buck 110 Micarta that had that black Micarta handle uh, with the pewter shield, the 420HC blades, and the nickel silver bolsters. That thing was gorgeous. Uh, Mr. Mark Sneed won that. Uh, yes, now we're having cat issues. Yeah. Lay down, Goofy. There's going to be a giant. Yeah, we got to get her out of here. There. <laughs> you got to move. Mama's going to move you. Mama's gonna move you. Go, go. Oh, I know she's upset. Upset. Ouch. <laughs> I didn't. I knew it wouldn't last. She's laid there for the last thirty minutes. Would not last. Would not last. But the winner of that Buck One Ten Macarta, the Black Macarta, was Mark Sneed. Congratulations, Mark. Uh, I know that you got back in touch with us already, uh, but congratulations to you for winning that Buck One Ten Black Macarta and for being a part of the SMKW Army, guys. Join the SMKW Army. Go on Facebook. Get inside the group. It is a great place to hang out, talk about things, talk about knives. The coolest thing about the Facebook group is this. If you go down your own feed right now on Facebook, I'm sure you're going to see a whole bunch of malcontents and terrible things going on. And just you just want to like close the laptop, turn off the phone, and get rid of it. That is not the case with the SMKW Army Facebook group. We have one intention there. That is to love sharp and pointy things. And that's all we do there. We talk knives. We show knives. We ask questions about knives. We bring up where you might find a knife or how you might fix a knife or how you might sharpen a knife. All we talk about are knives, guys, and it is a great place to hang out. If you can't figure out where to do that, just go onto our Facebook page. Go ahead to the left-hand side where you see the different menus there, and you'll see a listing for the group. In fact, I put a link up just the other day so that more people can get that. We are so close to 4,000 members in that SMKW Army Facebook group. It is not even funny. So go check that out. And uh, Mark Sneed, again, congratulations on your big win of that buck 110. Um, and go check out the other giveaways that are out there. Um, will you hand me one of those blade stickers right there? Yes. I have a correction to make because it was my fault, and apparently there's some form of miscommunication. I showed you this, guys, and we started sticking them in giveaways, and I know that a lot of you in the SMKW Army have been jealous of the folks who have gotten their blades sticker already. I thought that... Up until yesterday afternoon, I thought that they were going in every single brand new order out there. So I started calling around when people saying they weren't getting them. So I called uh, our COO and explained what was going on. And he said he couldn't believe it either. And turns out we weren't putting them in every order. But we're going to, starting today, with every order that goes out the door, 
you will get one of the new SMKW Blades stickers. That will be in every single order going out today. While supplies last, we got a lot of them, but uh, we're going to stick one of those in every single order. Uh, and hopefully, we will have t-shirts soon with that Blades logo on it. Yeah, we, we had that. That was actually the original idea where the t-shirt stickers came second. But when all this stuff came down and the pandemic started, our source for t-shirts sort of dried up for a moment. So we're back on that. We should have them fairly soon. But those shirts are going to be awesome, and I can't wait to get them in front of you. I also want to talk about one other thing as part of this business. And I have been telling you that we were going to do a, a slow reopening. Right, we are going to do a slow reopening. Well, that kind of changed too. May the 5th, we are going to reopen the store. It's going to be a full reopening. And uh, originally, and I told you I would come back and tell you if something changed. Originally, we were only going to open Smoky Mountain Guns and Ammo and the uh, immediate part behind the that, so the upper part of the store. We ran through meetings, talked about different stuff, talked about what we could do to keep people safe, how that was going to happen, and what we should do. And we decided to go ahead and fully reopen the store on May the 5th. So starting at 10 a.m. on May the 5th, Smoky Mountain Knife Works retail store in Sevierville, exit 407, jump off the interstate, drive up. We will have the store open starting at 10 a.m. Our store hours are going to change from what they are normally, and you'll see that go across all of the sites and on the Facebook page and all of those other places. We are going to be open on Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. And then we are going to close on Sundays and Mondays. And that way we can have two full days of closure to really deep clean the store in between the cleanings that are going to happen every single day. I want you to know that we're going to try to limit the amount of people that come into the store at any given time. So please be patient if you come up to the store. We're trying to keep you safe. We're trying to follow CDC guidelines. We're trying to follow local guidelines and our state guidelines and trying to open the store at the same time. That means that hand sanitizer to wash those grubby hands, uh, those are going, those are going to be throughout the store. You'll find them everywhere. They'll be on counters. They'll be whatever. If you feel like you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. I believe that our employees are going to wear masks if they need to, um, and that's what's going to happen. But the store is going to reopen, not just a small portion of it. The entire store is going to reopen on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. 10 a.m. is the first time the store reopens. Now, there are other things. <coughs> excuse me. There are other things that are going to happen uh, throughout the year that we'll have to work on and reset. I'll tell you right now that Blade Show was originally supposed to be in June. That is not going to happen in June. It's going to happen at the first week of August. So August 7th through the 9th in Atlanta at the Cobb Galleria. That's what it's scheduled for right now. That's what we're planning on. So Blade Show has been moved back. If there are other events that have come up that get canceled or get moved, uh, we have some big events that happen in the summer, some big events that happen in the fall. We'll let you know. The best way to find that information, and I've been telling people this through messages over and over and over again, guys, if you go to our Facebook page, or to our Instagram page, or wherever you need to go. Mainly the Facebook page is the best place to go find this information, at least from me. I try to pin all of this information to the very top of the page. I, I want you to see it. I want you to know it's there. So all this re uh, reopening stuff, it is pinned literally to the top of, this, of the page, and it'll stay there until I get different information or something big changes at that point. Um, I do want to show you one other thing. Let me make sure I've got that page up before I show it to you. Let's do this. Let's go here. Let's see if I can get it. There's that. I want to show you that we have a whole bunch of new arrivals. So if you're on our homepage, this is the homepage. As you can see, there's our announcement right there for the, re uh, the retail store. By the way, let me show you this while, you, while we're here, while we're into this kind of thing. These banners move right. Even on your phone, you can swipe right and get to them. Uh, so you'll see different stuff. There's that brand new Alox, the uh, limited edition, 2020 limited edition Alox, aqua blue, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Uh, some explanation of the shipping rates, uh, the fact that we sell ammunition. But those scroll through. And you'll see all kinds of information there. The other thing I want to point out to you is in this top menu right here. We, uh, Jason has been working very, very hard to clean up this new arrivals category. So if you click on new arrivals, you're going to see everything that's coming into the store new 
basically in the order that it's come in. Um, so right now you can see something that we're going to talk about a lot next week. There's that brand new USA made queen pilot test run. And we'll talk some more about that next week. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you guys, uh, that's ours. Now we now Smoky Mountain Knife Works owns queen. Uh, so, uh, you're going to see a whole lot more queen. This is a pilot test run. I'll have this knife in my hands for Tuesday's show. And we will talk all about it. I really don't want to get deep into it right now. I know I'm going to have some questions come out, but that is a new queen. It is not old stock. It is a USA made queen, a pilot test run right there. And yes, Smoky Mountain Knife Works does own the queen trademark right now. And we intend to use it and Queen City. But if you go on this page, you're going to see some cool stuff like that uh, micro, Microtech uh, uh, Dirac Delta. All the new A locks. If you just keep scrolling through these, you're going to see lots and lots of new stuff. And I wanted to point out here, we've got a brand new brand called MKM. Now, if you know anything about the knife industry, you're going to know that the MKM brand is an amalgam of all the really best uh, Italian makers. And then they've teamed up with some great designers like Jeff Voxnay's. Um, Lucas Burnley, and they're making some really cool knives. So I implore you, go look at the MKM stuff. It's pretty darn cool. Check out all the new arrivals in the new arrival section. And then again, don't forget, guys, that we still have uh, that special going on, that stimulus special. Um, and it has over 600 items in it. I'm going to click to that just so you can see it. From that homepage, here's the stimulus sale. Um, and if we go into it... Hopefully we'll get there. You're going to see all kinds of stuff. You're going to notice that we have over 600 core and exclusive items right here, including that exclusive bare knuckle at 77.88. So a lot of really, really cool stuff happening on the site. So don't hesitate to visit smkw.com. Let me get this off my screen and come back and talk to you guys. Okay. Any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, anything so far? Not nope. Really yet. Not really yet. Well, guys. They want Jason. They know when Jason's going to come back. We don't know. We don't know at this point. In fact, when I do get back to the real studio and we do get housed back in the place, I don't know if I'm going to let Jason come back either. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course, once we get back in the studio, Jason will be back with us and we'll be doing all of that. Um, let's jump into these because I want to do show you something fun first. And uh, it is the first of the five items that we have. And it is from Rough Rider. It has been around a while. It is a three... Okay, here's the thing. You're stuck at home doing nothing. You're stuck at home in quarantine. You want something to do. Why not go out in the backyard and throw knives at something? This is one of the knives in the Rough Rider three-piece throwing set. In fact, this is the biggest of the three. You get this size... Then you get a medium thrower, and yes, for the big prizes in your backyard, you get the little baby thrower right there. Okay, let me tell you about these, and, and, and I'm just not going to stomp on it. The price for the three-piece set of these is $8.99. So for 9 bucks, you can get a three-piece throwing set made by Rough Rider. These are 440A stainless steel construction, all of them, all three of them. They're all three and eighth of an inch thick. So the big knife itself has a seven-inch blade. It has It's a 12.5 inches overall. And then your medium knife that looks like this right here. Your medium knife has a 3.75 inch blade and it's an eight, eight inches overall. And then of course, your little baby knife, your small knife right here. I think this one would be harder to throw than the rest. I'm not an expert thrower. We need Tyler on the show to show you how to do this. But three and an eighth on the, on the blade and then 6.5 inches overall. Now what I thought was cool about these, when I looked at them, with these holes in the handle, man, if you wanted to make your own knife, you totally could. This is a blade blank as much as it is, right? As much as it is a thrower. Yes. I mean, that's a blade blank. So you could make your own knives out of these. And that's a real cool kind of almost Serengeti style blade. Got the harpoon top to it. Got the recurve in the bottom. Um, they are not super sharp here, but they are made for throwing. But you could sharpen those up because those are 440A stainless steel and eighth of an inch thick. So you've got a decent little knife with a nice grind going. Actually, you've got a decent three little knives with a nice grind going. Look at that. It's pretty right there. $8.99 from Rough Rider. Of course, it's built by hand and back for life. <coughs> You get your thrower, something's wrong with it, bent, something else. Give us a call. We'll take care of it. Make sure that you get that taken care of uh, from us. $8.99, guys. You can get this Mo Hunker. Boom. Right there. I'm going to throw this one. We should go out in the yard and throw these. I 
Absolutely. I'm all about throwing. You're all about throwing things? I think it's fun. It is fun. It is fun. We'll have to do that. We'll have to when we get that um, that new base camp parang. We'll have to uh, slap it through some wood and then uh, throw some knives at it. Um, yeah. Those edges are not sharp. No, they're not. And, and in fact, um, they're not super sharp at all. But so you're not going to damage yourself on these, even if you were to bang yourself pretty good. It is not going to cut you. I mean, look at that. I am not. That's. It's just ground. The edges are not sharp. But these are going to stick in wood just fine. Especially if you, if you're going to build a throwing set in your backyard, if you're going to build something to throw out, one of the best ways to do that is to use like two by four soft wood and go side by side by side by side, and that will allow you to stick into that pretty easily. Plywood does not work very well. Plywood has a bounce and a flex to it, so it's going to pop off. Uh, uh, the end of a log would be good as well because it has a porous inside, so that like a dartboard would work really really well as well. Any other questions, comments? Uh no, not at all. So that's our first item, eight ninety nine, nine bucks from Rough Rider, the three piece throwing set. We're gonna go right from nine dollars all the way to two hundred and thirty. And I had to show this because I love these knives. Then these are part of the new arrivals right here. This is the Lion Steel ROK or the Rock, as I like to call it. And now you can smell what this Rock is cooking. It is cooking excellence right there. This is the Red and Black Rock ROK from Lion Steel. I love this thing. It has a myriad of just fantastic little things that are on it. And I want to tell you all about it. So here we go. So the blade itself, that is a 3.27 inch M390 centered drop point blade. That is M390 centered, S-I-N-T-E-R-E-D. That is a type of that M390 steel. It does have a black finish. And guys, it is 0.18 inches thick. It has the crowned top, so it's nice and smooth across the top. But that thing is a good thickness for an everyday carry. Nice and thick. Now, here's the thing. It is a manual flipper, and it does have ball bearings on the inside. So this pivot works great. I can show you again how easily that works. We can do this. Boom, it's right there. That pivot works great. Here's the crazy thing. If you look at that, see that little hole right there in the flipper? Say you don't like flippers and you want to change that. This knife comes with a little wrench that you can put in that little right hole, hole right there and you can totally get rid of that flipper. I'm not going to do it on the air because it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and I am not into working really hard on this show ever. So here we go. Look, you put the wrench into that little hole right there and you can completely remove this flipper. Now, here's the other thing I want to point out. That is a one piece aluminum handle. One piece. So all the way rolled over the top, rolled over the sides, that is a one piece aluminum handle. It is a frame lock. Let me show you the frame lock right there. It is a steel reinforced frame lock. And then you have the, uh, what is that, the roto lock? Is that what they call that thing? Uh, yeah, roto lock. Yep. So right there in the center of that, see this little bad boy, right? It's so hard to go backwards here. See that little bad boy right there? If I twist that, it locks that frame lock. So if I take this and I twist it, this frame lock is not going anywhere. If I could make it twist. Twist. Oh, there we go. So now I cannot move that frame lock over. In fact, I wonder if I had it in the lock position before. No. So, so there I am completely locked up. I It's basically uh, stronger than it was as a frame lock at this point because I used the roto block. Um, and then if that weren't enough, look at how that pocket clip sits. This is a patented, they call it H whale or H period W A Y L uh, thing. See how that sits completely flush? It has a push button on the other side. Here's the push button right there. And if I push that button, the pocket clip raises up. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Uh, they, want, they said they want to know if there's any chance you could stand and try putting that in your pocket. Or maybe to be, they wonder how, it's the pocket how it feels in the pocket. To You're lucky I wore pants today, so <laughs> we're going to try it. So I push the button. That's nice. That's not bad at all. That is, that's really not bad. I mean, and then when you pull it out, it goes right back flush again. That's pretty cool. 
you guys see my quarantine gut right there on the screen. It's all that griddle cooking I keep doing. But again, it's a button. See the little gray button right there? If I push that button, it literally just raises the pocket clip. And it raises it enough for it to go into my pocket and then goes away. Um, again, this thing is 4.47 inches closed. So 4.5 inches closed, basically. Has a nice profile for the pocket. If you open it up, it is 7.8 inches overall. Weighs 4.44 ounces. Made in Italy by Lion Steel. And yes, this thing is $229.99 at smkw.com. There are seven different versions of the rock. Seven different versions of this particular knife, and that is includes different uh, handle finishes, uh, different colors, and different blade finishes on that. But I really like this knife. I wonder if it is sharp. I'm going to bet you that Lion Steel made this knife sharp. Yes. Whew, they are such good makers. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, that $230 is a lot to pay for a knife. I'm not going to lie about that. I'd have to think about that one, but this knife, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that just doesn't that's nice the rock from lion steel questions on it other than what we've had so far um, are you giving away the lion steel no no i'm not the lion steel is not the giveaway <laughs> not the giveaway but man is that a great knife or what right there look at that so pretty any other questions no. okay awesome so that's the Lion Steel. We've had the Rough Rider three-piece throwing set. We have had the Lion Steel. And let's see what is up next. Now, you've seen this before. This is one of the biggest knives from Artisan. And this is one of our SMKW exclusive. It is a Hyperion Copper. In case you don't know, uh, and you haven't heard me say it a million bazillion times, all of the Artisans have ceramic ball bearings. And so this is a ceramic ball bearing flipper, but look at the size of this bad boy. This is a very big EDC, and this is our exclusive copper handle version of the Hyperion. Um, this knife right now is 40 bucks. It is 40 bucks at smkw.com. Started off life as $59.99. The Hyperion right now is only $39.99. Has a four inch D2 clip point blade with a satin finish. It is 0.11 inches thick, so it has a very nice thickness to it. Um, it is a manual flipper, like I said, with ceramic ball bearings. The handles are solid copper on both sides. They have steel liners and a liner lock. And then, of course, you're going to get that ambidextrous tip-up pocket clip so that if you're lefty or righty, you can switch this over to either side. And you've got a nice lanyard hole on this. Here are the stats on this knife. I, I can't just say this enough. This is a big knife. It is 5 inches closed, 9 inches overall, and because of that amount of copper there, this thing weighs a whopping 8.6 ounces. This is a big knife. When you put this knife beside the Osprey, it is actually bigger than the Osprey. It is heavier than the Osprey. This is a fantastic knife. If you were into doing that whole patina thing, that shipwreck patina that's out there where you use salt water and uh, I think it's, it's ammonia, right, that he uses? So you use ammonia and salt water to patina. We'll have to look into that with Josh and see what all he does. But you can really shipwreck patina this thing. It would be gorgeous all the way through and 40 bucks at smkw.com right now on that Hyperion. Uh, I'm going to cut with it just because. Do what? Somebody asked about a small version. No, there is no small version of the uh, Hyperion. Man, they get these so super sharp. They just totally do. Good lord. That is nice, right? Of course, I do that twice in a row. Three times. There we go. I'm out. I'll, do, I'll, I'll leave on a good note right there. Artisan Cutlery Hyperion. If you guys don't know the Artisan brand, go check it out. They're making great knives at a very budget-friendly price, and this thing is fantastic. They actually right there. do have, a what? Small, they have smalls coming. Oh, really? Yeah, because they get all of them. So uh, Molina is telling me that they do have small Hyperions coming. Yeah. Doesn't, isn't Hyperion like a mountain or something? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. That's the Hyperion, 40 bucks from Artisan Cutlery. Uh, I want to show you the next one. Uh, this is 
a Kershaw dividend speed safe assist man it's so snappy I cannot imagine uh, these are they're just so snappy look at that speed safe assist on this knife this is to me is a great EDC right here from Kershaw this thing in particular rides easy in the pocket it's going to do everything you need to do on an EDC right now 2988 from smkw.com it is the Kershaw dividend normally has life at 4399 but because of that big special we're doing 2988 uh, this is a made in the USA speed safe assisted flipper from Kershaw it has a 3 inch 420hc drop point blade with that stonewash finish very pretty right there it is 0 0.09 inches thick so it's pretty slicey again speed safe assisted flipper black gfn handles and it's a liner lock you can see that right there let me show you the other side of this knife and it does have an ambidextrous tip up pocket clip so lefty righty friendly speed safe look at that little american flag right there on the back kershaw usa made closes down to 4.25 inches this is what it looks like closed right there 4.25 inches closed once you open it with the speed safe assist let me try to get right there so you guys can see how snappy that really is 7.25 inches overall that puts it in the medium category for everyday carry 2.2 ounces made in the usa right now go get it it's going to get it's going to get out of stock soon i promise you that 29.88 at smkw.com um 29.88 for the dividend not bad i like the 420hc because you can sharpen it up really well so let's talk about that for just a second 420hc in this knife um 420hc is high the hc is high carbon but it is a stainless steel guys it is a stainless steel it is not a carbon steel it is not going to rust you don't need to treat it like cv you don't need to treat it like 1095 or 1075 420hc is actually categorized as a stainless steel it just has a high carbon value to it but it does fall into the stainless steel category so put this in your pocket no matter how much you sweat uh <laughs> no matter whether you're riding the uh, log flume ride take care of it a little bit it's going to be fine because this is a stainless steel 420hc is a stainless steel on this knife and again that one's 2988 uh, right now at smkw.com, USA made Kershaw dividend right there. Questions, comments, thoughts, mm -hmm. concerns. <laughs> okay. So we've been through four. We've been through the Rough Rider three-piece throwing set. We went through the Rock from Lion Steel, which I love, the Artisan Hyperion, and the Kershaw dividend means we have one final knife to get through. And this is the one to me, is probably the best value on the site right now. And I say that because it is a brand that you are not familiar with, but it was made by good, strong makers, and it is now on sale after it was already on sale for almost nothing to begin with. This is a 511 Tactical RFA folder. What? I said, ooh, I like that one. Yeah, 511 Tactical RFA folder. This is an S30V drop point knife. I, I This one to me is a little scary when it opens because it is assisted opening and it is super poppy. Boom. I mean, it really goes. You can feel it jerk in your hand when it goes. It is a ambidextrous thumb stud opener, so I have to be careful as I do it. Mm, move. There we go. Boom. This knife right here. This knife is a 3.5 inch SPM, uh, a CPM S30V drop point blade with that black finish. It is an eighth of an inch thick. Ambidextrous thumb studs for opening, no flipper on it. It is spring assisted and really, really snappy. There's a liner lock on this thing and those are uh, FRN handles and fiberglass reinforced nylon handles on that right there. Um, it does have... What I like is the four-way pocket clip. So this pocket clip has four positions, tip up, tip down, left and right, both. So however you prefer your knife to be in your pocket, that's how you can do it with this 511 Tactical RFA folder It because it has all of those mounting options on that. Of course, it does have the lanyard hold as, as well. I'm going to close it back up so you can see what this thing looks like. Again, 
closes down. This is this is what I would say is just over a medium sized EDC, almost into the probably a full size EDC. Five inches closed right there. Open it with the ambidextrous thumb studs. Mm, there we go. Boom. 8.5 inches overall and weighs 4.8 ounces. 4.8 ounces from 511 Tactical. Again, started off life cheap already because we bought these as a closeout at 40 bucks. This is an S30V recurve drop point folder for $25. $24. 99 right there you can't beat that i mean if you would have told me that we'd be selling an s30v knife for 24.99 i'd have said no way especially not an assisted opening knife what are you laughing at we're discussing how, how some people don't like sharpening a recurve oh yeah it, said it's just as easy for me to sharpen that as this is anyone else right you just take it to the people at sharpening <laughs> and they do it Can you sharpen this for me, please? yeah that's basically the way i do it as well uh yeah because if you look at some of the knives, I, I'm not going to go to the bowl and show you my dismal attempts at sharpening. But <laughs> the faces of the blades are just all scratched to bits. I mean to bits because I am terrible at sharpening. Ooh, that's nice. Have you noticed this? those S30V, S35V, all those M390s, they just, they just do well. They, they're sharp. I like this knife, I, especially at twenty four ninety nine. You cannot beat that right there. Any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns? I like the way it looks. Yeah, it is. It is seriously a tactical folder. It has that nice amount of jumping right up there. It has the nice fuller in it. It is a tactical knife from five eleven. Guys, we're brought to you by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, SMKW.com, the world's largest knife showplace, knife store whatever you want to call us. We will be reopening the retail store on May 5th at 10 a.m., the entire store. Not just part of it. The entire store will be open. So if you want to come see us, you want to come to the Knife Mecca, exit 407 off of Interstate 40 in Sevierville, Tennessee, literally three and a half, four miles off of the interstate exit. Once you cross the bridge, you'll see the big blue roof on the right. You cannot miss it if you have never been to our store and want to do that in your lifetime make sure you make it happen because it is truly a destination if you love knives you're gonna love this place if you love mounts like things that go on the wall we have tons of those we actually have an elephant on the wall we have a polar bear we have a zebra we have a full-size moose we have almost everything you can possibly think of and i keep finding weird strange animals on the walls at Smoky. it just yes. it is what it is right we also have all the museum quality pieces that go around the entire store so if if you ever wanted to see the entire sample pattern from IXL from, say, 1917, well, there it is with its order number on the wall ready to show. What else we got, guys? Any questions, uh, comments? Yes. Brian Hollyfield suggested that you need to design a rough rider that's a good bush, bushcraft knife, something like a condor. Well, you know, I've been trying to talk about doing this for a while, and uh, we have some stuff that falls into the marbles category. Um, uh, part of the marbles brand is ours as well. And um, so we've been thinking about that. Why not? You know, I, I think with some of the different steels that are out there now that we could play with, it might be a cool idea. It, it was Brian. Brian, I appreciate that idea. I really do because I think that there is, I think that Rough Rider as a brand has proven itself to be a good, solid brand with an excellent warranty and the ability to branch out and do different things. Some of those new uh, flippers that are coming out from Rough Rider are just amazing. So while we increase the quality and know what we can do with a uh, traditional slip joint, uh, Rough Rider is now expanding into bigger and better and cooler uh, flippers as well, modern style knives. In fact, I've done the box for one that's coming that you guys will not believe it is as good as any other uh, anything else on the market right now, and it will come in soon. What else we have? Where did the mounts come from? The mounts. So I, I am not positive on this story. I know that some of them uh, came from an individual who used to be our general manager. And I know that a lot of them were donated. I know that a lot of them were just collected over a period of time by Kevin Pipes, the uh, founder and C current CEO, CEO of Smoky Mountain Knife Works. So I don't know all of the background, but I'm, I'm going to say that each year when they come in to clean the animals, then you have to dust them and everything else because they're mounted up all over the walls and the ceiling. Uh, I know they're cleaning like, there's got to be a hundred easy, right? A hundred animals in the store, easy. Yeah. 
-hmm. Probably more than that. From everything from, uh, you know, the uh, eight-point buck that's the heads on the wall all the way to there are more stuffed animals cheetah. Than doors. Do what? There are more stuffed animals than doors. There are. <laughs> we have yeah, we have doors. lots of doors. Uh, but, I mean, there's a cheetah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Come see it. You won't believe it. Just look up. You'll start seeing animals everywhere throughout the store. What else? Anything? So I want to remind you guys that the F I've talked about it at the beginning of the show. Join the SMKW Army. Make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're signing up for our newsletter as well. Go on to the side, the top of the site. You can sign up for the email newsletter. We're sending out an email almost every day now because of this pandemic, because of this quarantine. And we just want you to know what is in the store and available for you. The email newsletter, excuse me, is one of the best ways to do that. So Go sign up for that. It's right at the top of the page. You can't miss it. Catalog is coming. May Catalog is getting ready to drop into the house right as we speak. I know that good old Sean was making a banner yesterday, so that information is coming. So you'll see some brand new stuff in a catalog that we mail out. Um, go do that. Join us on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page. We do a giveaway there. Subscribe to YouTube. Make sure you're doing that. And that helps us guys. We are just cranking through the numbers there and we do a separate giveaway on YouTube every week. So if you know us and you know about what we're doing, you can go get entered into the competition on Facebook. You can get entered into the competition each week on YouTube and you got two chances to win right? You got two chances to win. Uh, we also do that kick it or card it every morning where you can weigh in on what you think on a particular knife that we put up every single day. We do get to the point and that is a quick look at any, at a certain knife once a day. And then, uh, we also do, I've lost my train of thought on this. Oh, the whiteboard videos, brand new. So if you have suggestions for whiteboard videos, go ahead and let us know what those are. Anything else that's anybody's got? I heard you digging around in the bowl. Do what? I have nothing in my pockets. <laughs> Not a thing. Neither. Not a thing. You're lucky I have on pants, people. <laughs> You're lucky I showered in the last couple of days. I mean, we, it's not smell-o-vision on YouTube because it might be ugly. My my quarantine beard, though, just keeps growing. I'm kind of digging it. I might have to go full, like, hillbilly style here. Oh, no. Monster Racing 38 just had his entire collection of miles stolen. Oh, and that's yeah. terrible. Yeah. That is terrible. That is terrible, man. I would not wish that on anybody to have their entire collection stolen. Hopefully you had some of that with insurance in the house and can get at least their collection started again. we got to decide what to give away. Um, I, I won't move on to that until you... I, I hear you laughing over there. Any other questions? Uh, Michael Fleming suggested a Rough Rider Auto for twenty four ninety nine. <laughs> so autos, surprisingly, here's the funny thing about autos that I don't know a lot of people know. If you sell an auto in the U.S., it has to be made in the U.S. You cannot import an automatic knife. So if you note, like the bokers that are for sale, the bokers themselves are um, being made in, what, Germany? And then they shipped over to here, and then they are converted into autos. Do what? I'm sorry. She said something, then she whispered it, and I had no idea. Uh, and, then the, and then they are converted into autos. And so the autos that you see are USA made because by law they need to be. We cannot import automatic knives into the country. Somebody asked to see the bowl. The bowl? He missed the first one. Oh! Oh! God. This is the bowl. This is the big bowl of knives. This sits in my kitchen normally. This is what we dig through to try to find... Uh, a knife to carry for the day. This is where the knives go when you get back home. Uh, this is not all of my knives, uh, but it is quite a few. It is ones that I like to put into rotation. It is the ones that uh, Molina likes to put into rotation. But this is the big bowl of knives, and it is is—it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy right now. Ugh, I'm old. Yes. Okay, so what are we going to give away? What are we going to give away today? We've given away a lot of artisans, so I'm going to take that one out of the mix. Um, uh, giving a lot away a lot of Kershaw. I'm going to take that one out of the mix. Um, throwers would be fun. Did the throwers come out of a... Um, were they in a clam pack? No? Wow, they were in a box? Did they have a sheath with them? No. No. They just rattling around in the box. Mm -mm, mm -hmm, mm -mm, mm -mm. 
Um, <laughs> they all still give away the Pena. The Pena, no. We're never giving away We're the never giving away a Pena. <laughs> Not going to do it. Give away the bowl. Give away, away the, the bowl. Uh, no, the hat and the bowl are mine. You will have to pry it off of my cold, dead head before you take it away. Um, yeah, I, I'm down to that at this point. So let's do the 511. It's the S30 V 511. Um, let's see. What can we do? I think I just cut myself. Nope. I scratched myself pretty good, though. Did you? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see if I bleed out here in a minute when that happens. Thumb studs. Not my best move on that. So what do we need to do? I want, I want to have this write something down that uh, comes in uh, for this. So, I, you know, I, I loved when you guys told me about your hometowns. That was cool to read all that different stuff. I loved when you told me what you like about Smoky. Um, how about this? Tell me what your favorite brand of knives is and just a short sentence why. So I want to know what your favorite brand is is and why so that's how you're going to enter this competition if you're watching on youtube remember your live comments do not count i can't go email you from there i can't get to you from there i can't reply to your comment from there so you need to comment on the video on youtube in the regular part not in the other part but i want to know what your favorite brand is and just a short sentence why so like my favorite brand is kershaw because i love speed safe assist blank it's that easy right so that's what you're going to write down and you'll get entered to win this 5 511 tactical rfa folder with the s30v the uh, assisted opening the dual thumb studs all of that anything else we've got uh there was a question that i don't know the answer to and you probably won't either okay but uh the old cold war cold war style ballistic knives are they legal i don't, and I don't. available to, to the collector's market now i know ballistic knives typically tend to go along with automatics right so like in tennessee there's no right law against anything right i i honestly don't know I don't know, that either. I don't know that at all the ballistic knives and whether that and and um that's the knife that shoot literally shoots out yeah 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 i have no idea on that to be dead honest anything else no <laughs> no she said no so make i'm gonna go like <laughs> do what I somebody hear. suggested make us write a haiku make us write a haiku <laughs> Oh, I don't know that I could write a haiku. We'll see on that. Guys, uh, come join us on May 5th if you want to. Uh, if, if you don't want to, come just shop at smkw.com, the world's largest knife store. Online, 28,000 products, including ammunition and some other great stuff, uh, survival gear, all kinds of things, flashlights, everything you can possibly think of out there online, and apparel, all kinds of cool stuff. Next orders that are coming out, get this blade sticker. Bing! Right there. Um, I'm going to roll out of here. Melina's answered all your questions. Everybody else is, you know, the cat's in prison. I'm going to go let her out of kitty prison. And we're going to get out of here. I am Andy. Then you've watched a whole other episode of Guys Talk Knives live. I will see you on Tuesday of next week when it is, in fact, Cinco de Mayo. Bye, guys. I'm out of here. <laughs>